Lord. She used her gadgets to give God the glory, to give God the honor, and to give him all the praise. Okay, now we got to stand this thing up. So that's what we're doing. We're just trying to... And you know, when you are serving the Lord, just know you're going to be under attack. <laughs> you're under attack. If you're not doing nothing for Jesus, ain't nobody going to mess with you. But when you're trying to serve the Lord, serving the Lord is all I do. I tend to my little business. And then people come at you. And then the people that come at you, shabby, your, your own household. From, the own, from your own household. Not even from the household of faith. And Lord have mercy, we don't even want to get into the uh, household of faith. Okay, uh, Smurf, family, and Mama Pam. Trying to set up my live me over here. Pam. Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. That's what I'm doing. Reading the Bible. So I got up this morning and I wasn't feeling well. I had, um, I was having pain in my eyes. Pain in the back of my head. Sinuses. All this here stuff. It was just all con congested and stuff. And I wasn't feeling well. So there was a thing. Okay, I see you. I see you on there, sweetie. Oh, bless your heart, Diane. And no, I wasn't okay. <laughs> I'm okay down with my family. I tell you, the Bible says when when people forsake you, when you when you forsake your family and this and that for Jesus, He will bless you. He will reward you. Um, Sometimes our natural family just doesn't do what we desire them to do, what we want them to do. Um, they they kind of find boogers. When ain't none, <laughs> you know, you, you be digging, you be digging, you be digging. If you dig for boogers long enough, you're going to find some, right? But um, anyway, I got up to, I got up this morning, uh, Diane, and I just wasn't feeling well. Okay, family Smurf. Um, so, Smurf family and, okay, hold on, and Bible read, I'm trying to set up, <clears throat> One other platform, another live me on Pampo. All right. All right. One of them takes pictures and one of them doesn't. My lips is dry. I just rolled up out the bed. I've been in bed all bed all day, y'all, and I refuse. I said, I'm, I can't, I can't. I just can't get dressed and all that stuff. Just can't do it. But what I can do is read the word of God. That's what I can do. Because heaven and earth. I just want some lip gloss so my lips don't be so ashy. Because heaven and earth may pass away. But God's word is going to be here forever. God's word is tried and true. And God's word is always going to do what he said it would do. So if we just stand upon his word, don't worry about nothing else. Everything else will fall in place. Yes. Okay. So what I did, what I did, Diane, and those others that are listening, I just happened to see her name on here. Hello. 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 How are you? God bless you. Um. Ooh. Savage love. God bless you, sir. God bless you here on live me. God bless you. What I did is I read, uh, listened to a video and read some information from a black scientist. He said he is not a doctor. He was, he's a scientist and scientifically, um, the African American, um, body, our cells, the way we, our receptors, the way we receive, uh, the rays of the sun, the vitamin D into our body is different from the way others people's skin receives the rays because our skin is so thick melatonin, the color, then the rays, it takes more of the sun's rays to, uh, the vitamin D from the sun to come into our body. Those of us who have been inside, been inside, I've been inside since February, not necessarily getting the vitamin D from the sun because I'm not in it, then you make your body susceptible to viruses and germs and anything that's floating around in the air. And we all know that this, um, nice to meet you too, Mina. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, in this season, 
the, the, being inside, not outside, we're not getting the vitamin D. So our body's susceptible. Um, and we need, the African Americans need more vitamin C than any other of the uh, races. So vitamin C, then he, vitamin D, vitamin D, I'm sorry. But then he was saying, and I've heard others, and there's other things flying around, and that says, at the first signs of a virus, the first signs of a virus, double take, um, I think it was 2,000 milligrams of uh, vitamin D and 2,000 of vitamin C. And then in two hours, you take 1,000 of both of them and continue doing that for two or three times. Uh, so you'll end up, I think it's about four or five times. I did it since about two o'clock. Every I set my timer. And it said that you will, within six to eight hours, you will feel markedly better, if not all the way healed. And if the next day you're feeling the same way, do it again. You're just putting all of these things into your body. So that's what I did. And I do feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. And then I woke up to a disturbance, disturbing text message. Took the wind out of my sails. I said, I thought we already went through this a couple weeks ago. We back at it. <laughs> so I said, Lord, I just can't, I can't, I can't do the broadcast today. And then I said, you know what? Yes, I can. Because this is what keeps me going. My ministry. Having, spending that time in God's presence, reading his word, being with my family, Hey, listen, listen, Sister Linda. See, I need y'all. I don't do y'all need me. I don't know if y'all need me or not. I think y'all might. Well, I don't know. Because y'all keep coming. But I need y'all, Shay. I need you guys. You're my family outside of my family. Sometimes your natural family can't, you know, they, they they didn't appreciate Jesus. Jesus couldn't do nothing in his own in his own home. He keeps they said he did no miracles where he was. Because the people looked at him and that, that's just Jesus. That's Jesus. That's Mary Joseph's son. That's just Jesus. And so my family at times look at me. That's just mama. That's just granny. I want to hear. I be, oh, they have. They've been listening to me all their life. And I've been preaching to them all their life. So I guess in, in the real, they do pretty much sort of kind of know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Rocham, Rochambo, Rochambo, I am cool. I am cool, and you keep on coming, and you'll see just how cool I am in Jesus' name. Pray you need, well, we need each other, Sister Linda. Sister Linda says she need me to read another word. No, we need each other. <laughs> That's why I'm up here in my pajamas, because we need each other. I said it's my family. I'm, I'm getting up. I don't feel like food, putting on the food, food and the jury, and I don't feel like it, Jesus. But I do feel, anytime you read the word, you feel better. Anytime you get in God's presence, you feel better. Anytime you spend time with God, you just feel better. You just feel better. So I feel better. Oh, now my beautiful, beautiful. Y'all see my beautiful house coat? Isn't it that beautiful? Oh, my God. Again, my husband did not know what to get me for Christmas. He, he, he don't pick clothes. He don't. That ain't what he do. He said, I'll take you and you'll get. I said, no, 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 no. You get something and get about this size. <laughs> So he got me a house coat, 3X, about that size. My husband thinks I'm a 3X. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. But it's got plenty of room. It's got plenty, plenty room. I wrap up in it like a blanket. I said, baby, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. And he got me some other items. But this is the best of all. Because I be cold. I and I be cold. I be sitting right here, I be cold. Child, put this thing on, and it's big, so it'll go over any of my clothes, any other clothing that I may have on, sweats or anything else. I just put it on, and all the cold is gone away. Instead of burning up all the electricity in the house, it's just me and him in one room. We don't need to do the whole house, put on some clothes, and if it gets, you know, not to chill out, we put the heat on, not to chill out, and then put you some clothes on. Don't use up all that electricity. People ain't got no money. People don't have money for that right now, in that season. So it's 707, it's 707. I'm here in Jesus' name. It was love brought me here. Love brought me here. 
You in the bed with the Bible in the bed with you. That's a good place to do. That's a good way to do it. Come on now. Love brought me here and I'm here in Jesus' name. I said it was love brought me here. Love brought me here. It was love brought me here and I'm here in Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come before you right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God, for this being another day that you have made wherein we choose to rejoice. Things come against us. Opposition come against us. And we can choose to let it affect us negatively or we can choose to let it affect us positively and we just continue to give you the praise in the good and in the bad. When we're happy, when we're sad, when we're healthy and when we're not, when we're strong and when we're weak. We let give you all the glory and give you all the honor and give you all the praise. So we thank you, oh God. We thank you for another opportunity to come before our Father to read the word of God to these your sons and these your daughters. Lord, I thank you for the Smurf ministry because it's a source of blessing unto me. I thank you for these faithful ones that continue whenever they see me come up, whatever they're doing, whatever they are, they set aside time to meet at seven o'clock. And that's why I try to get them in and get them out on the 30 so they know it. We just 30 minutes. Y'all just give me, just give me a few more minutes. She just about finished. Give me a few more minutes. She just about finished. So I thank you, oh God. I thank you, oh God. I thank you for my precious Shay and Kaya, for those young ladies who've been in here with me for a couple of years. They've been growing up on this online ministry thing. And I thank you for them. Always faithful, always here, always on time. Praise God. And when they late, they still on time because you can't never be late always on time in the Smurf ministry. We don't be chatting no clock or seven o'clock. You didn't make it. No, we glad you made it when you made it. So we thank you, oh God. Now, Lord, we ask that you come within us and we thank you that we allow you to rest, rule, and abide inside of us. We thank you, oh God, that you live and you have your being in us because we have invited you in by way of being, by way of salvation, by way of accepting you as our Lord and Savior into our life. And then, oh God, we thank you that we can see, we can discern, we can see behind a thing. Thank you for spiritual discernment, oh God, because when the enemy attacks you and fights you so much, there must be something there. There's something there that's aggravating and annoying the enemy. And that's the light of Christ that's shining through. So, Lord, we thank you that we realize we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against the spiritual rulers of darkness of this world. That's where the warfare is. It's not the flesh and blood. It's the spirit that's there, that's clashing, that's irritating, that's annoying. It's the spirit. So we thank you that we know what to do. You said to resist the devil and he got to flee. So we thank you, oh God, for the resisting power and the enemy has to flee. As we get into your word, we ask that you open up my vocals. Let me read with clarity. Let me read with excitement. Let me read with enthusiasm. Lord, thank you, O oh God, for healing this vessel yet one another time and again. The enemy comes near my vessel. He got to come. He got to come and see what's going on. He got to come and see what's going on with me. And then I resist him and he has to flee. So continue to keep me whole. Keep me healthy. Keep me well so that I can do your bidding. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we do call it done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Okay, so we left off on yesterday. And um, some honey on the ground, right? It was honey. Here we go. Okay, so um, yesterday, Saul messed up. Right at the beginning of the read, Saul messed up. Because he said, oh, I, I just... I just thought that I, I, I didn't see you coming. So I figured I'd go off a sacrifice to the Lord. And he couldn't do that. He was not in the position. God didn't. God called certain people for certain assignments. And if God tells you to speak to the rock, Moses, you better try to speak to the rock, not hit the rock. So he did not tell Saul. So um, uh, Samuel came and told him, you have done foolishly. Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the now would the Lord have established 
my kingdom upon Israel forever. The Lord would have established his kingdom for Israel on Saul. But, 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 verse 14 of 1 Samuel 13, it says, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Better do what the Lord commanded thee. The Lord told me to read seven minutes. So I don't care. I don't care what's going on with me. I'm trying to be sitting here reading these seven minutes. That's what I'm trying to do. Amen. All right. So that's what we're resuming. So so they done did that. And then they went out and uh, Saul made an edit and told people, don't nobody eat until we do this, whatever they was doing. They was fighting and he didn't want anybody to eat that day. Okay. So this is what happened in verse, verses 25, first Samuel 14, verses 25. Uh, so none of the people tasted any food. That's 24. And all they of the land came to a wood. And there was honey up on the ground. That's where we left off, honey on the ground. And when the people were coming to the wood, behold, the honey dropped. But no man put his hand to his mouth. For the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore, he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and he dipped it in the honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Woo! Because honey can build you up. Honey's a healer. Praise God. So then answered one of the people and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father has troubled the land. See, I pray you how mine eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more if happily the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For ha <clears throat> excuse me. For had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? And they smoked the Philistines that day from McMash to Ajalon, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slew them on the ground. And the people did eat them with the blood. That's a no-no. People ate them with the blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord, and they eat with the blood. And he said, Yea, ye have transgressed. Roll a great stone unto me this day. And Saul said, Disperse yourself among the people and say unto them, Bring me hither every man his ox and every man his sheep and slay them here and eat and sin not against the Lord in eating with the blood. And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night and slew them there. And Saul built an altar unto the Lord. The same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and spoil them until the morning light. And let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw near hither unto the Lord, unto God. And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? But guess what? <laughs> he answered him not that day. The Lord ain't answered him. I ain't think about you, Saul, you disobedient. And Saul said, draw ye near hither all the chief of the people and know and see wherein this sin had been this day. For as the Lord liveth, which saveth Israel, though it be my, though it be in Jonathan, my son, he shall surely die. So wherever the sin is, I don't give it my son, he's going to die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then he said unto all Israel, be ye on my, be ye on one side. And I and Jonathan, my son, will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee. Therefore Saul said unto the Lord God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan, my son. And Jonathan was taken. And Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him and said, I did taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in mine hand, and lo, how must I? So they knew if they sinned, the sins was death, so they didn't trip. I, I did it, I'm just going to die. 
They didn't try to lie their way out. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die? Who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid. As the Lord liveth, there shall not a hair of his head fall to the ground. For he hath wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. It's a blessing when somebody stands in the gap for you. Praise God. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. So Saul took the kingdom of Israel and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab and against the children of Ammon, and against Edom and against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines, and whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. And he gathered in the host and smote the Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, and Ishuai, and Melchushua. And the names of his two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn, Merab, and the name of the younger, Michael. And the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimaaz. And the name of the captain of his host was Abner, the son of Ner, Sam's uncle. And there was sore war against Philistine all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took him unto him. Chapter 15. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the Lord's, of the uh, voice of the words, of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalekite did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, um, Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both the man and women, infants and suckling, ox and sheep, Camel and ass, destroy everybody. And Samuel gathered the people together and numbered them and tell of him 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye shewed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. They got saved for showing kindness. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And the seven minute read stops here. And he took Agag, the king of Amalekites alive, Lord Jesus. He just done messed up right there. Didn't the Lord tell him, kill everybody? Ain't that what the Lord, see, we just do what the Lord tell us to do. Just be obedient. Read seven minutes every day. That's all the Lord told me to do. Read seven minutes every day. Amen. So we want to thank God. That's where it ends. That's where it ends. You got to come back to another cliffhanger. We on another cliffhanger. So we come back tomorrow. First Samuel, the 15th chapter, verses 8, where he done took King Agag alive. Now, we just said, Samuel said, God wanted to anoint him to be the king over his people. But now, therefore, hearken. This is your test. This is your test. And he done failed this test. We don't want to fail our test, Smurf family. We want to walk up right before God in this season. As we come into 2021, we want to be found doing what the Lord would have us to do. If the death angel happened to come through one of our homes, let us be found doing what we're supposed to do. If it decided to come and tag my door and if he decided to take me, I, I plan on living to be 120. I'm telling everybody, I plan on living to be 120. But for some reason, if I don't make it, I want the Lord to find me doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Reading seven minutes, preparing, trying to find another avenue to do some more gadgets, to do some more reading, to reach more people, to reach more, to give them the word of God. Because that's the only thing that's going to sustain us in this season is this word. You better stay in the word. If you don't know the Lord, then you better seek ye the Lord now while he may yet be found. Call upon him while he's near and stay inside in this season, this season that we're in. Stay inside until this thing be passed. 
If I had to read this and read this and read it until it resonates in y'all brain, in y'all spirit, in y'all mind, so every time y'all go out y'all door, y'all think about what mom bam reading out that word and it saved your life, then that's fine. It's 722, so I got another few minutes. It ain't 730. So let me read it real quick. Isaiah, the 26th chapter, verses 20 and 21. I hear everybody saying that them making us stay inside shouldn't be. That's fake. They making you stay inside and your immune system's getting worse and keeping you inside, keeping you away from people. That's what society, it's a setup. They're trying to genocide the black folks. They're trying to do it. Well, if the black folks would stay inside like the word of God is saying, they can't get, they can't kill you all. But out there in the air, you don't know. They got stuff going on. They may have it fixed so it just get the black folks that's out there breathing the air through the mask or any other kind of way. But I just stand up on what the word say. I know it's an Old Testament scripture, but it's the scripture that I have found confidence in. It's freezing. Uh-oh, it's frozen, my baby said. Okay, let me close it. In now. She said it had froze. Well, I was through. I was through anyway. Um, Diane, let, let Kaya know I was finished anyway. She said it froze, so it's okay. <clears throat> so let me read the scripture and get on the bar off of here. I'm just standing on this scripture until God give me another one. So the word of God says in Isaiah, the 26th chapter, verses 20, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers, come into your houses, shut the doors, it's got an S on it, shut the doors about thee, close the doors, close all them doors, y'all got these big old houses, all these, close the doors behind you, hide thyself as it were for a moment. You feel like you've been hiding inside, Sister Linda. Diane, feel like we just inside hide, not been in here since February, hidden from the world. Ain't nobody come, can't nobody come. I ain't going nowhere. I was traveling all the time, going back and forth to the Bay Area. I was traveling. I'm here, I'm young, going here, going there. I can't go nowhere right now because God said stay inside. That's what God said, and then that's what the government said. Stay inside for a little moment, just a little while. Until the indignation be overpassed. And why? Is, what is the indignation? The indignation is, he's going to tell you. Just keep, keep reading. Verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their sin, their willful sin. God is coming out of the moving his place up in heaven, coming down here to the earth because of their, their our sin. And the earth shall disclose her blood. If you out there and you're not home, they they shooting you in the back. Shooting you in the back. Who shoots a person in the back? They shooting every day. Somebody getting shot in the back. So the blood is not being disclosed. So the blood, the blood, the blood shall disclose her blood. So you're going to see the blood and you shall no more cover your slain. There are so many people dying from Corona and from being shot in the back. They can't even cover them all. That poor little man, what's the man named Crump? The attorney, he can't keep up with all the murders every day. Here then yon all across the United States, folks being killed, murdered. He can't keep up with all of them. But it's right here in the Bible. So to keep from being murdered, stay inside. Now they might come in homes too. Then the Lord will have to show us something else to do. But for right now, that's what it is. Amen. All right, that's it for today. Praise God, I got up and did what I need to do. I'm, I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. For those of you who are looking at the backup replay, if you want to send any donation to dollar sign Mama Pam 23, dollar sign Mama Pam 23, that'd be appreciated. And or paypal.me forward slash Pamela Dobson. God bless until the next read.